So I'm going to load uh, this very, very simple project, and we'll just take a look at it, see what's going on. So if I just press play here, you'll see that this ball is, seems to be getting closer to me, and this ball is following me around wherever I move. And then this very badly modeled um, face is also very, very slowly following me. Oh, no, it's following the ball. Okay. And I'm allowed to move around, and I can move around on this, this plane here. If I were to walk to the edge of the plane, which I'm doing now, then I go down. Okay, so I'm, I'm just falling down right now. You can see by the Y value on the um, camera object. So let's take a look at this scene. Um, we've got a number of game objects. Let's just expand everything. So first we've got a, di a directional light. That directional light is just providing some just, gen just general uh, illumination to the scene. So this is a game object with just one component. It's called a light component. If I were to just, let me just delete this and just remake it. So to create a new game object, you can either, um, if, you know, if you know the type of game object you want to make, you can just go here, create, and then directional light in this case. Or we can go up to game object and say create empty. And this will make an empty game object with just a transform. Remember, every game object must have a transform. I'm just going to make that 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to rename this and call it uh, direction light. And now I'm going to add a component to that game object. And there's various ways that we can add components. We can click the Add Component button. No, there's no root the node. Scene. There's no root node of the whole of the whole scene. I get well, unless you can't see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we can add a component. So it's going to be in rendering, and then light, and then it add, it's just added the light component here. I can then choose it to be a directional light, and directional lights only have a, an orientation. That's the only thing that really affects it. Um, so we'll just turn it a bit towards the plane that we have, and we see that our scene is illuminated. We can change the color of that light. Um, we can change the shadow type. I'll talk a little bit about sh shadows later. And we can just hit play. So now you see that the lighting has changed to reddish. And the same thing's happening. This object is following me around very slowly. So you'll see that I can still use my mouse while I, I, I've still got a mouse pointer here. That's because you can still use the editor, you can still use the Unity editor as an editor while you're still playing. So we've got up here, we've got the scene view and we've got the game view. Because I've, I've just pressed play and we're playing, I'm in the game view now. This is the, re this, the simulation is running at the moment. However, you can still just go to the scene view and you can see things happening. If I just run away from this light a little bit, and then we quickly go to the scene view, you'll be able to see the light slowly approaching my main camera object, which is over there, um, in the editor view. So you can make changes uh, to um, properties of the inspector, these properties here, um, while you're still while you're still running your application, but in editor mode. One thing to remember though is as soon as I, if I were to for instance change the uh, direction, oops, what did I do there? Okay, so I, okay, I just did something by accident there, but this is a good demonstration. So by accident, my mouse dragged the plane, which was originally not part of the main camera, it was originally part of the root, in the root hierarchy, to be a child of my main camera. So I've made a change but I'm still, pl but I'm playing it. And also I'll just demonstrate one more thing. So if I change this to blue, we can see that we can, 
see what's going on uh, in both the scene and the game view. So see our changes that we've made in the inspector. But as soon as we stop, pl as soon as we stop playing, you see that all of those changes that you've made while your game is while your simulation is running are forgotten about. So this is use this is both useful and quite annoying. It can be useful because it allows you to in real time tweak um, uh, parameters and scripts, so you can see the uh, effect immediately without having to stop, recompile, etc. But you need to remember that those changes will be lost once you stop playing. So you need to remember what you did change. If you just if you tweaked a parameter to be exact value, remember to write down that exact value before you stop playing because it'll be forgotten about. And you'll also see that so my um, direction light has changed back to red, which it was before. And uh, the plane is now, as it was, part of the, part of the root hierarchy. So what else is going on? We've got a main camera object. Every scene will have a camera object. And your, your main camera object, you'll see, has a special tag called main camera. Tags are useful for uh, accessing lots of game objects or single game objects within scripts. And you can think of the main camera tag as a kind of built-in easy access uh, point into your main camera because it's a common thing that you'll want to um, know where it is because that's where your viewpoint is. So on our main camera object, we have a transform, like every object has a transform. And we have a camera object. So this is the, sorry, a camera component on the game object. And the camera component has various things, like it's a perspective projection as opposed to an orthographic projection. Now it's an orthographic projection that's not set up properly, but we can get it looking reasonable, I presume. Okay, it's not where it, okay. So that's my orthographic projection. I think it's just very large. Okay. Yeah, so you can see, you can see in the camera preview box there that it's changing the projection properties. Let's keep it as a perspective projection. Change the field of view up to 180 degrees, 179 degrees. Uh, the clipping planes, um, depth I'm not going to talk about today. Uh, that's for use, using multiple cameras, uh, simultaneous multiple cameras to render different layers, basically. Um, HDR, this is a high, this is a, um, a pro feature only. Um, so it has a camera component, that's the main thing we have. However, we, we can also move around. So you'll see that I'm using the, I'm using the um, movement keys to, to run around here. And I can also move my viewpoint with the mouse. So it's obviously got some sort of other scripts on there, some other components on there. And it's got a, yep. I think that's just a rendering artifact. I, th I think it's, um, you'll see that it's kind of on a radius around me. Oh, maybe not. It's just a rendering, I've never actually seen that before. Um, it could be a shadow, it could be something to do with shadowing of my direction light. So I've got a hard shadows on my direction light. I haven't kind of optimized those shadows. So I just, if I just change it to soft shadows, Okay, it's still the same. If I put no shadows, let's see what happens. Okay, so it's something to do with shadowing because I've just turned shadows off and they're not, the, the artifact isn't there anymore. So it's something to do with shadowing. Uh, it could be the shader that we're using on the plane as well. I'll talk about shaders in a bit. Do you have, do you have experience with whether things like shadows and high definition uh, rendering effect slows things down to a certain degree? Or have you seen it slow it down? Or um, they do obviously require more, uh, more power, but uh, practically I haven't. Practically, I've never been able to make a Unity project which doesn't run at above 30, at least 30 frames a second. You're probably doing something a bit wrong if, if, if it is running there because, I mean, okay, if you're making a commercial game, then that's a different that's a different game. But yeah. uh, but uh, for us, you know, we're making smallish projects. You're probably doing something wrong, or a script is 
causing some sort of error or uh, you're writing to a file to a to the screen or something like that. There's got to be a limit to the number of real time writes that they're allowed. Yeah, to. yeah, there are limits. Yeah, but again, I mean, I, I'll show you another project uh, which has maybe a hundred real time writes, and um, yeah, it runs fine. Okay, so we have on our main camera we have a we have the camera component. We have this character controller component. This character controller component is actually a built-in um, uh, component of Unity. So this, when, when you start a new project, you will have access to this, um, this, this component. And it's under component, and then character, and then character motor, uh, character controller, sorry. And um, what it does is it creates a collider uh, which your camera object um, uses to interact with um, other colliders within the world. So uses to walk along planes, possibly go upstairs and follow, ter and follow terrain and bump into things. Um, so for instance, if I were to walk over to this guy here, I can't go any further because I have a collider attached and the object has a collider attached. I'll talk a little bit more about colliders in a bit. We also have a mouse look script so the mouse look script takes the x, y values from the mouse position on the screen and uses it to um, to orbit the to, to uh, rotate the camera. And this is what that script looks like. It's a C sharp script. Um, and the key. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that in, in, in a couple of slides actually. 